So let's start with rule number one. A singular subject takes an S form of the verb. So let's have an example for us to understand further. The cat sleeps peacefully on the window sill. Dito po sa ating sentence, ito po yung subject at ito po yung verb. So ito yung subject which is singular kasi walang S, yung ating noun which is cat. And sleeps, may S, ito po kasi yung ikinalilito ng nakararami ano. Kapag singular noun, noun po yung tinutukoy ko, iba po yung verb. Kapag singular noun, di ba walang mga S. Kapag singular verb, may S. Ito yung verb eh. So, kinakailangan kapag singular noun, kailangan niya ng singular verb. So, dito sa ating halimbawa, kapag ang isang noun or pronoun or ang ating subject is walang S, that means singular. At kapag yung verb naman may S, singular yan. So, singular noun takes a singular verb as well. Kaya kinakailangan po wag kayong malito kung ano yung noun, pronoun, verb. Ngayon, let's have another example. The teacher explains the lesson to the students. In this example, the subject is singular, walang S. And our verb is also singular, with S. Explains. So kinakailangan po para mas madali ninyong matandaan, Kapag ang noun or pronoun or in short yung subject, walang S or ES, kinakailangan yung verb may S or ES. Opposite dapat sila. And I hope it makes sense. So now let's proceed with next rule. A plural subject takes a base form of the verb. So dito, iba naman po. Plural na yung subject. And of course, nangangailangan po ng plural verb. Example. The dogs bark loudly in the neighborhood. As what we can observe, the subject is plural. And nangangailangan ng plural verb. So again, kapag plural verb, yung base form ng verb, walang S, walang ES. Kailangan base form, yung original form ng isang verb. Another example, the students submit their assignments before the deadline. Obviously, this is plural, and it needs a plural verb. So, this is a plural verb. This is the base form, walang S. So, I am hoping na klaro na po yan. So, now let's proceed with rule number three. The subject pronouns he, she, and it must take the S or ES form of the verb. So, let's have an example. He dances gratefully. At the annual ball. So, this is our subject, he. So, we need the S form of the verb, dances. Hindi tayo pwedeng gumamit ng dance. Kinakailangan may S. Another example. She writes an interesting article for the school newspaper. And this is our subject. So, we need a singular verb. And again, ang singular verb is yung may S. So, that is why gumamit tayo ng writes. So, let's have another example for us to intake deeper. She washes her car every Sunday to keep it clean. And again, the subject is she, which is a singular pronoun. So, we need a singular verb. And again, ang singular verb is yung may S or ES. So, ano ba ang base form ng washes? Di ba wash? So, we added ES. That is why naging washes na siya. So, last example for this rule, it takes a man and a woman. So, we use takes instead of take. We cannot say, it take a man and a woman. That is grammatically incorrect. So, I hope that makes sense. And now, let's proceed with our next rule. Kapag ang subject naman po natin is I, you, we, and they, it should take the base form of the verb. So, let's have an example. I enjoy reading books in my free time. So, dito, hindi tayo pwedeng gumamit ng I enjoys. Another example. You need to submit the report by the end of the week. So, we cannot say you needs to submit. Instead, you need to submit without S. 
Another example, we plan to visit next month. So we have the subject and we have the verb. We cannot say we plans, but we plan. Last example for this rule, they play soccer together every weekend. We have the subject and we have the verb. So we cannot say they plays, but they play. Let's proceed with our next rule. If you encounter these singular indefinite pronouns, so you must take the S or ES form of the verb. So, syempre, yung ating mga subjects are singular indefinite pronouns. So, we have to consider singular verbs as well. Again, ano nga yung mga singular verbs? Yung may S or ES. Next rule, we have plural indefinite pronouns. If you encounter these words like both, few, many, and several, it should take the base form or yung original form of the verb. Several of the guests will arrive today. And this is our subject, which is a plural indefinite pronoun. So it needs a plural verb as well. At ang verb po natin sa sentence na ito is arrive. At ito po yung base form. Next example, both cats love to chase birds. So ito yung subject, ito yung verb. So again, this is a plural indefinite pronoun, so it needs a plural verb, which is love. We cannot say both cats loves. So let's proceed with our next example. Many volunteers work tirelessly. So again, this is our subject and this is our verb. Last example for this rule. Few apples remain on the tree. Ito yung uh, subject. And this is our verb. So, let's proceed with our next rule. The indefinite pronouns like all, any, most, none, and some may be either singular or plural. Pero if the pronoun refers to a single person or thing, it is singular, of course, and must take an S form or ES form of the verb. But if it refers to more than a single person or thing, it is then plural and must take the base form of the verb. So let's have an example. All want to participate in the charity event. So dito yung subject natin is all, which is an indefinite pronoun. So yung verb is want. So hindi tayo pwedeng gumamit ng wants, but want, which is the base form. So let's have another example. Any person can join the book club to discuss literature. So dito, ito yung uh, subject, and this is our verb. So again, we need to take the base form. Next, most people enjoy spending their weekends outdoors. None of the information is missing from the report. Some prefer studying in groups for better understanding. So these are the subjects, and these are the verbs. So without any further ado, next rule na po tayo. Look at these examples. We have two subjects for each of the sentence. In number one, we have two subjects which is John and Mary, and it is being connected by a coordinating conjunction and. So we need to use plan instead of plans. The same with number two, we also have two subjects, so we need to use play instead of place. The sun and the moon illuminate. So, hindi tayo pwedeng gumamit ng illuminates. Next rule, when two subjects are joined by or, nor, either or, neither nor, the verb agrees with the closest subject. So, kung sino yung pinakamalapit, again, the closest subject to the verb, they must agree with each other. Now, look at these examples. We have here in number one, neither the cats nor the dog likes to be alone. So this is the closest subject to the verb. So this is singular. Therefore, we need a singular verb as well. How about this one? 
either Sarah or her friends have the concert tickets. So again, we have two subjects here, Sarah and friends. But friends is the closest subject to the verb have. So we cannot say either Sarah or her friends has. But instead, we have to use have. Last example for this rule. Neither the teacher nor the students were prepared for the pop quiz. Observe the sentence. Again, this is the closest subject to the verb. So that is why we need to use were instead of was. How about if we're going to flip the subjects? Neither the students nor the teacher was prepared for the pop quiz. Now, observe that the closest subject to the verb is already singular. That is why we use was instead of were. Next rule, when a compound subject is composed of an affirmative and a negative part, the verb agrees with the affirmative part. In these examples, we can observe that in number one, the children is the affirmative part. So the verb appreciate agrees with the affirmative part of the compound subject. By the way, what is meant by affirmative part? It refers to the part of the compound subject that expresses a positive statement or it is a part that is agreeing with a verb in terms of positive action. Now, in number two, not only the shift but also the customers enjoy the new menu items. The affirmative part here is the customers. This means that the positive action of enjoying the new menu items is attributed to the customers. And the verb enjoy must agree with this affirmative part. And that's all for this video and I hope you've learned something new today. By the way, this is just the part one. See you next time. Bye for now.